Do you want to live forever? Let me tell you how. If we want to understand what our earliest ancestors were like, our best evidence is the murals that they left deep in the caves of Southern Europe. And when we think about ancient Egypt, we see the paintings that anonymous artisans made on sarcophagi and grand sculptures like the Sphinx, monuments like the, the great pyramids at Giza. The Greeks, the Romans, well, they're represented by marble statues and architecture too. The Medici, they were these all-powerful merchants, but they live on long after their last pennies were spent because they were sponsors of artists like da Vinci and Raphael. Popes like Julius and Leo, they led armies and they converted millions of people to Christianity, but they're remembered really because of Michelangelo's creations. So when our civilization is over, what's going to represent us to the future? When every company on the Fortune 500 has vanished, when the borders of all the world's nations have been redrawn a hundred times, when all of these glass and steel towers that we've been building have all tumbled, when hard drives have been wiped and silicon has decayed, what's going to stand as our legacy? Is it going to be our wars, our laws, our economy? Or is it going to be Walt Whitman, Bob Dylan, George Lucas? A few years ago, I visited the Jewish Museum in Prague, and they have these pencil drawings that were done by children who were long since consigned to the pyres of Auschwitz. And when I looked at those drawings, I felt those, the spirits of those children. I felt them enter and inhabit me. I felt them live on through those faint marks that they made on paper. Hitler should have been more diligent in burning those drawings, too, if he was so hell-bent on wiping those children from the earth. When I think about my grandparents, I don't think of their success as doctors and whatever accumulated capital and savings accounts they had. I don't even think about their role in the community. I think about my grandmother's garden which does, was designed to look like a, like a Persian carpet, and her roses, and her topiary, shaped like a peacock, and her frangipani trees, and her cacti. I think of my grandfather's stories that he wrote about his childhood in the shtetls of Poland, and his experiences in Pakistan after partition, all of them written painstakingly at his walnut desk in a cloud of pipe smoke and then hand-bound between shirt cardboards. My grandfather would have been ooh, 114 this year, and his body is under the ground in Mount Olive in Jerusalem, and his house is occupied by strangers. His friends his siblings, they're all but dust. But his stories, they live on in the archives of the Leo Beck Institute, but also in my memory, and in my sister's memory, and in my son's memory. Art is our way to immortality. Long after your will has been executed, and your real estate has been dispersed, and your Facebook account has, account has been archived, it's the drawings that you make and the recipes that you write down, the jokes that you tell, those are the things that will keep your spirit alive. Your illustrated journals, records of what you did and experienced and felt, those things will be the mark, your mark, on this earth. Make sure that your family understands that your art is you. It's not to be consigned to eBay or it's thrown in the dump. It is the most precious part of your legacy. And it should live on. Oh, and make sure that that monkey, that horrible critic in your voice, doesn't stop you from making those pages in the first place, from creating that art that 
It's going to keep your spirit alive. Don't kill your memories before they can be born. Be brave. Be creative. Be immortal. Oh, hey, I, speaking of immortality, I just wrote a new book. And it's sort of like a, an owner's manual for creative minds. And if you watch this video all the way through, well, I'm pretty sure you're going to like it. Pick up a copy on my website. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.